Today on Typical Books, we're going to be talking about My Friend Dahmer by Dirk Factor. It is a typical book. My Friend Dahmer. It is a typical book. It is lovingly repackaged from its original state as a short graphic novel and expanded upon, re-illustrated, and everything. It is going to be a major motion picture soon. We all love when books become major motion pictures, don't we? I'd have to say that this is the Marvel superhero film of serial killers, in a way, because it is a rare feat for a graphic novel about a serial killer that doesn't get completely lambasted and hated to go on to become a film. That's pretty crazy. Jeffrey Dahmer will always have a certain place in the minds of those very interested in learning about serial killers, not only to understand better the minds that are broken, but to better understand some of the things that are close to breaking within a very well-adjusted, high-functioning person who is no threat to themselves or society, but operates on a level not dissimilar. If you want to read a heavy story about a disturbing teenager, My Friend Dahmer will certainly quench your dark little desires, but this book is about a lot of other things, and things that matter much, much more. That's from Chuck Klosterman, the author of Sex, Drugs, and Coke Puffs, The Low Culture Manifesto, and author of The Visible Man. I don't know who Chuck Klosterman is, but that's about right. It is about much, much more, and it is a very, very dark little book. But at the same time, kind of lighthearted because we want to talk about high school in the 70s and what it was like. We have snapshots of what Dahmer was like, but this is one of his friends. The only thing that he could have called a friend, really, aside from the dog hanging in the bushes behind his house or the pig in a jar. It is a soft cover book with some more information on Durf Factor for the illustrator who had taken it upon himself to capture a lot of what Dahmer was doing in high school through joke illustrations, because he'd been an illustrator all of his life, I take it, and through high school actually incorporated Jeffrey Dahmer into a lot of his funny illustrations he would do, I guess in class, like most illustrators do, instead of actually paying attention to the teacher. And I don't blame him. The illustration isn't necessarily a style that I would typically like, but you can see where his uh, influences lie in being about the same age as my dad. He's probably 20 years older than me, 20, 25 years older than me. So into all of that um, rat fink and stuff. And I guess he would have to be about 20, 25 years older than me to understand the rat fink reference. But it's got that picture of, of what we assume Dahmer was like in school, uh, drunk, basically. And it does cover a little bit of the beginning of his descent into his serial killer and before he moved into his grandmother's. So it is a really interesting snapshot and well worth it, you know, especially if you're going to go see the movie or if you've just seen the movie, then I think that this is the ultimate companion to that. And for those who don't like the idea of having to read a whole book before going to see a movie, it is a couple hours really to sit down and get through this and it's very very rich the illustrations are very well done the story is extremely rich the cover doesn't wrap around but it's got some shots of what it would be like living in the suburbia near where i live with forests surrounding but like the edges of suburbia i take it and wonderful cover good fonts the lettering is fairly easy to read i don't know how much of that you can see but yeah I bought this as a gift for Chris because it is a wonderful counterpart to Joyce Carol Oates' Zombie, which I've just covered, which was a gift from Chris to me. And although Zombie's not about Jeffrey Dahmer, it's about somebody fictionalized but very, very similar to the same sort of decline that Dahmer would have been going around with other people not really knowing there was anything necessarily wrong with them, not having a lot of friends being treated oddly in school, not doing well in school, the drinking, the drug addiction, the gay fantasies, the fantasies of having somebody who is um, mindless, zombie-like, 
to be with them as a, a lover forever, which is sort of the goal that uh, Jeff Delmer had solely organically come to, a very twisted goal nevertheless, which he would readily admit later on in jail with it in, during interviews. My Friend Dahmer is a haunting original graphic novel by Durf Bachter. I need to say Fred backwards, Durf Bachter, but Fred isn't even his real name, so that's all fun. An award-winning political cartoonist and comics creator. That's comics with an X. In these pages, Bachter tries to make sense of the future serial killer with whom he shared classrooms, hallways, and car rides. What emerges is a surprisingly sympathetic portrait of a disturbed young man struggling helplessly against the ghastly urges bubbling up from the deep recesses of his psyche. The Dahmer recounted here, universally regarded as an inhuman monster by the rest of the world, is a lonely oddball who in reality is all too human, a shy kid sucked inexorably into madness while the adults in his life fail to notice. The adults and his friends. His friends knew there was something strange about him, definitely, in his Dahmerisms, imitating somebody with uh, some spastic disorder, uh, and the, his incessant drinking and missing class and just being generally a 100% loner. Otherwise, uh, they definitely knew there was something wrong. And it, while it does paint a sympathetic portrait, the author does have a lot to say about, you know, completely, utterly condoning his actions and knowing that he was very, very twisted and very, very dark and should have been caught sooner. Can't lay blame on the parents or his friends and those around him, but can lay some blame on law enforcement. But we all know that story, don't we? Bachter started illustrating some of this after 1994, when the news of the arrest hit, and he began going through other materials that he had saved from high school that showed Dahmer in this high school glory, and talking to friends, and, be and illustrated and drew and created this uh, short graphic novel, and then later on in 2012, went through and interviewed people and did a proper job, what he feels is a proper job, re-illustrated it, and did a really wonderful job, actually, in as far as researching the case. And there are some notes in the back about the case and places where he got his information for those who, you know, would be interested in reading more about Jeffrey Dahmer or those that know the case very well and very intimately already. You know, it's a really good resource that way. So if you don't know much about Jeffrey Dahmer, I wouldn't normally um, consider a comic book as your number one go-to resource, but this is a really good start, actually, if you don't know anything about Jeff Dahmer. If you've lived on Mars in a cave for all this time, or just aren't interested in this sort of thing, but are interested in horror, because you would read your typical books if you're interested in horror. So yeah, it's a very, very good find. Uh, very highly recommended, and I enjoyed reading it a heck of a lot, and it went as a great counterpart with Joyce Carol Oates' Zombie. No one wants a friend like Jeffrey Dahmer. It even says, now a major motion picture. That's what every author wants in their book. Well, the half of them. A well-told, powerful story, Backdurf is quite skilled in using comics to tell this tale of a truly weird and sinister 1970s adolescent world from... R. Crumb, Robert Crumb. And Robert Crumb is part and parcel of my Rat Fink reference. You can tell I have only barely flipped through this very carefully because it is a gift for my husband to say a Merry Christmas, but I mean, he gives a Jeffrey Dahmer book to people for Christmas, like really 